Welcome to another stage on our spiritual journey. Uh, we've been talking about uh, those who are not moving, those who are uninterested in the spiritual journey. And then we went to talk about those that hate God because of a wound. And in that festered to where there is, there, there is no God, um, it's completely cut off. Uh, today we're going to go talk about a stage that's maybe even more dangerous. Stage, is there a God? I don't know. And at this stage, as we consider this stage, um, we're kind of reminded of sacred scriptures um, uh, where the Lord says, I wish that you were rather hot or cold, but you are lukewarm, and so I spit you out. I, I think there's something to be said about someone that hates God. Um, there's still a relationship there. I think we forget that. People that are angry at God or resentful or, or whatever it may be, there's still a relationship there with God, even though it's... There's a lot of animosity there, but at this stage, stage is there a God? I don't know. This kind of ambivalence, um, it's it's a very difficult um, stage because God is not seen as part of a person's life, part of the world. Um, there's just, the field is open, almost too open. Um, and so at this stage, um, this is an environment where a person lives their life without any reference to God whatsoever. God's not seen as part of anything at all. And it really doesn't seem like there's any consequences to that decision to um, not have a relationship with God. There's just complete ambivalence. I don't know if there's a God. You know, some say there is, some say there's not. Um, you know, some have proof for this, some have proof for that. I, I really don't know. But... At the same time, there's 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 at least a, maybe an openness there. Well, I, I really don't know if there is a God, and maybe I would be open to that conversation. But we find a lot of this, is there a God, I don't know, kind of this ambivalence within secular society, within secular, secular cultural, uh, where you have uh, kind, of, uh, kind of this New Age religion, um, where we talk about all kind of different things, and everyone is discovering their own truth for themselves. Um, and it's absolutely and completely disorienting. Um, a person that's in this stage, their lifestyle is completely absence of, absent of God. And in their mind, uh, and in the mind, there is conflicting information about God. So like kind of withheld, withhold judgment. I, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I don't know if there's a God. And a lot of times I'm just too busy to think about it. Um, a lot of times they haven't received um, any kind of formation growing up with parents or in a household. Um just there's a complete ambivalence um so this person was probably raised outside of any religious background or if it was it was very nominal maybe once a year going to church um maybe it was someone who was raised in a religious background who has experiences or information that makes him doubt god's ex existence and uh maybe also this is a person trying to reconcile faith and reason um a lot of times in protestant dom denominations we get this this dichotomy where it's, you know, there's there's the truth of science and there's the truth of the faith, and, you know, uh, and they, they really don't mix. Uh, whereas in Catholicism, we believe that truth cannot contradict truth. What's true in sciences is true in the faith. What's true in the faith is also true in the sciences, and, and that somehow we've got to, to, to reconcile the two, and how is it that we go about uh, reconciling the two? A lot of times, maybe kids are raised within uh, a Christian culture, Catholic culture, um, and they find other information, and upon considering that other information, maybe not considering its authority, but uh, makes them doubt, makes them question, is there a God? I really don't know. And so how is it that we can go about having a conversation with a person um, whose life experiences have made them ambivalent about the existence of God or not? Um, I think the best place to start is experience. In almost all conversations, the best place to, to talk and to experience and to open up a conversation um, is to share experiences. Um, I had a conversation with someone the other day, and they were, they were talking about, well, this person said they're an atheist. And, uh, you know, forming intentional disciples says, don't accept a name when you can accept a story. And so instead, well, the person said, responded, well, I'll pray for you. Instead of saying, well, I'll pray for you or whatever, or just shutting down the conversation, open it up. Um, you know, can you tell me more about how you came to that conclusion? And I think that's really helped for us in the stage of someone who's struggling with the existence of God and the thought of it. Can you tell me what's on your mind? Can you tell me what you're thinking about? 
Can you tell me, like, what are some thoughts of why God might exist? What are thought, some thoughts about why God might not exist? Um, and then on our part, we can share, well, this is how I have experienced God. When I went into confession, I was so weighed down and I was so heavy about what I had done. But when I confessed my sins and said that, I just, I, I had this feeling of peace, this lightness, that I was really expe- able to experience pardon from God. When I go to church, man, I'm, I'm filled up and I'm ready to start the week. And when I don't go to church during the week, I'm, I'm left empty. Um, experiences that you've had of grace moments in your life, experiences that you've had in prayer. Um, and in this day and age, um, my experience is my experience and you can't argue against it, right? So it's almost the coming from a place of experience is actually stronger than science because we now respect everyone's ex- ex- experiences. And I think we can use that for our own benefit. So share your experience of God with a person who um, doesn't quite know um, if if there is a God. So that's one way to consider it. Also, to the, in the conversation with this person, uh, consider reasons you have for God not existing. And to also add, ask the question, do you have all the information there is on the subject? I think if you look at the whole little library I've got here, there's so much information. I mean, just reading through the Catechism of the Catholic Church, um, just reading through that and its notations, I so many times think we kind of put blinders on to information, to certain information, and then we willy-nilly accept information from other sources. Um, And so I think in humility we have to acknowledge, do I have all the information that there is out there about God, and and am I in a place where I can make a decision about that? Um, Kind of if someone's approaching God from a kind of a scientific point of view or a logical point of view, Something I find uh, helpful is St. Thomas Aquinas' Five Proofs for uh, the Existence of God. Something can't come from nothing, for example. Um, that we have aspects in our life that are, that are qualities that are, that are leading up to something. Let's, these, these qualities have to lead to something. They have to lead to God. And so St. Thomas Aquinas' proofs for the five, for, five Proofs for the Existence of God are helpful as well. And then maybe just to open up the conversation, or what do you think? Hey, what do you think about Pascal's wager? Pascal's wager is, if you don't know whether there a God exists, the bet is this, how to, how to hedge your bets, so to speak, right? He says, it's better to believe in God and there not be one than to not believe in God and there be one. Let me repeat that. Pascal's wager is, it's better to believe in God and there not be one, than to not be believe in God, and there be one. And so it's something I think we can look at in the way that Christianity, the way which we live out our lives, even if there was not a God, my life is much richer for having lived out the values of Christianity. Um, and also there are the eternal consequences of what if I live my life in such a way without God, and there happens to be a God. I, I've got I've got a lot that's on the line there. And so it's something for us to think about Pascal's wager um, and to to consider that point of view and and that perspective. Um, So at this stage, is there a God? I I, I don't know. Again, it's where we're opening up a conversation. We're talking about our experiences, their their experiences of, and then why they're saying there may or may not be a God, and then our experiences of um, how we have experienced God in this life and how do I know that it's, God that I experience and not just me talking to myself. Okay, So continue to open up conversations with others. Don't shut them down, um, especially if they're coming from a place that's you know not the perfect Christian, not the perfect Catholic. Um, but open up those conversations and never accept uh, labels when you can have a story. I'm angry at God. Can you tell me more about that? I'm an atheist. Can you tell me more about that? I'm frustrated. I'm, well, whatever it is, I think so many times we can just open up a conversation by saying, I'd like to know more about that. Can you tell me about that? Um, And that helps, allows a person to be heard, uh, not judged, and accompanied, which is what we want to do. And we can help them uh, and help all of us grow in our relationship with God. So I hope this is helpful as we consider the stage, is there a God? I don't know. Uh, Next week, we're going to be talking about stage, I'm scared of God. And the reasons that people are scared of God. It'll be very interesting. May God bless you, and you'll have a great week. Thank you.